just so we know who's on deck, David Bell from Andrews. Okay, thanks, Marty. Uh, and thanks to the KBS folks for hosting us all. It's great to be here. Uh, I'm delighted to report in for North Temperate Lakes site news. Uh, we are looking forward to having a site review in three dimensions later this summer. And uh, congratulations to Grace Wilkinson, shout out back there, and her tenure buddy, Hillary Dugan, for getting tenure. Okay, so scaling, uh, we've done this for a while um, in a bunch of different ways. We've done scaling sort of a la marine sites, looking at the huge heterogeneity within the sites and dealing with that. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, but today what I want to talk more about is actually the scaling up to larger spatial scales. We have used all sorts of different approaches, uh, remote sensing informed by ground-based data, statistical, um, process-based, and machine learning models and combinations thereof uh, that get a pro uh, based, um, excuse me, validated by NTL lakes and applied broadly. Uh, we do a lot of regional and cross-scale sampling, lots of synthesis. So we, you know, we'll do it all. Um, and the example I wanted to pick here was a little bit of an old one, but it is one where we are uh, enjoying and embracing and pursuing many of the consequences of this particular scaling up. So it begins uh, with Jordan Reed, who was a PhD student who developed a very detailed uh, temperature model of lakes. So this is a picture of uh, one of our northern study lakes doing what modelers do of collecting a lot of data, reconciling different spatial uh, data layers, and being able to use this to drive a process-based model of lake temperature. So being able to then uh, show the annual thermal cycle and then the, over years for a whole bunch of different lakes to finally in the bottom right, develop a map of lake warming across the entire state of Wisconsin. So this is great, be super useful. Um, but the value of this particular model was a very LTER sort of a thing where he and another graduate student, Gretchen Hansen started talking and she studies fish and they were able to work together then to make more out of this. Uh, they developed a random forest model to predict which lakes would or would not support uh, walleye, which is one of the most favored fish in all of Wisconsin. Uh, and their populations have been declining and trying to figure out how, where they're going declining and where the villainous uh, bat, largemouth and smallmouth bass may be increasing. Uh, and so effectively what they were able to do is take this detailed temperature model, link it with the uh, detailed, really nice walleye data. This is Greg Sass, who we were also able to, as a result of this, incorporate as a PI and predict not only which lakes support bass versus walleye now, but how that may change into the future. Okay, so then uh, the successes, and I will say of this project and others are also the challenges. Um, I think the advantage that came out of this is, of course, like all, all LTR sites, is having the opportunity to take advantage of a good understanding of site-based processes, be able to use the data to validate models. And an outcome of this, too, was that there were a lot of the NTL folks, including Paul Hansen, who's here, and Jordan, uh, and many others who developed tools that became incredibly important for this model, uh, so Lake Metabolizer and R Lake Analyzer, that are used widely in the lake communities. Uh, access to data was very, very useful for us. There's good data for the state of Wisconsin, but it also was a challenge because, you know, they're big data sets and they have issues and harmonizing them is not trivial. And similarly, the opportunity to have cross-disciplinary models was an opportunity, but also fish people talking to uh, modelers was a process. <laughs> And finally, I'll say this has been a great pro example here because uh, we learned where our lakes do and do not cover global gradients. And uh, this has been something that's been very helpful. Again, I'm gonna shout out to Paul again because he's been a leader in the Global Lakes Ecological Observatory Network where we've been active, uh, he's been active leading and to provide that context and leadership and how to do the modeling. Uh, there have been new R packages that are spreading through the community, and we're sort of seeing it go forward to the next generation of researchers. Um, and we have been able to build strong bonds to uh, 
Wisconsin DNR, as I said, Greg is now a PI. Um, and he has used that result of these modeling efforts to inform current DNR uh, fisheries management policies and where they are focusing and trying to sustain walleye populations. And Jordan, on the other hand, went on to become the, I guess, the inaugural director of the USGS Data Science Sec um, Center or division, whatever they're called. And he said that this effort of learning about needed pipelines and data visualization and things like that really shaped the way that data science section developed. And of course, we were able to strengthen bonds with remote sensors and of course, the global community of uh, limnologists through these and other efforts. So that's it.